hi everyone i'll be showing you in this tutorial how to make this beautiful shirt you're seeing on the screen without pattern drafting and i think this tutorial is the most easiest and simplest tutorial you've ever come across i'm yinky you're welcome to tutorial so you're going to the first thing you would do is to fold your fabric into two then afterwards you're going to fold into four so when you are folding into four you will leave sewing allowance of three inches this is your sewing allowance and also your button allowance. Three inches will be left. Then here, this is your hem line. You're going to mark one inch upward like so. So that will be your hemming allowance. And then after that, you're going to take your shirt length. The shirt length in my own case is 25 inches. I'll just take 25 inches like so. Uh, it may be more than that in your own case but for mine it is 25 inches and the circumference you're going to use to fold must be the highest body circumference my own is hip so for some people it may be the chest it may be the bust line so you're going to add one inch to that circumference and here you're going to take all the vertical measurements i input my bust point 10 inches and half length 17 inches half length is also my waist so my bust point is 10 inches which is b and my waist is 17 inches measuring from my shoulder which is um w w is for waist then here upper chest you come up by two inches on the bust line to get your upper chest so come up by two inches on the bust line to get your upper chest so my uc is upper chest so after that i'm going to input my shoulder measurement the shoulder measurement here that i have is 7.5 but i'll be inputting 8.5 because it's a shirt so i'm going to link it to my upper chest to form my arm o line then the arm o curve goes like that so later i'm going to input the arm o curve but here I will be input the I will input the neck neck width. The neck width for this um, tutorial is 2.5. I'll be using 2.5. I think 2.5 should go for size 10, size 12, size 14. So size 16 will be um, three inches thereabout. So this width is 2.5, and here. I'm going to come down by half of an inch because this is on fold. This is the back. You can see that we have folded the back and the front together. In this, we have folded the back and the front together. So we'll be drafting the back and the front block together. So that, that one is for the front. This is the front. And the one that is on fold is the back. So F means front. B here means the back. So I have labeled it so that you'll be able to understand what we are doing. So when I'm drafting neckline on the front, you should know. And when I'm drafting neckline on the back, you should be able to identify. So here is my back and here is my front. So I'll be doing the drafting together. So I'm going to input the depth of the back neckline. The depth of the back neckline will be half of an inch here. So I will just curve it up like so. So after drafting the back depth, then I'll move to the front. So as you can see, the depth of the front also is 2.5, 2.5 depth. That means it's 2.5 depth and 2.5 width because we are still using the back width. So I will use the back width like so and curve it up as I have done just now. So after I have done that, I'm going to add um, sewing allowance of half of an inch later. But this is the back and this is the front. So the, this is the center front line. I just input the center front this is for the center front so after i have done the center front i will input the button allowance the button allowance you know i had it three inches initially so i will divide that three inches into two i will have 1.5 there about here i will just mark 1.5 that's the button allowance so and you when we want to sew it we are going to fold so the remaining allowance will be for the folding so this is the button allowance and this is the for the folding so i'll fold up on this like so i'll fold like so and put like a quarter of an inch inside to stitch it so that's how that will work and i'll add half of an inch here to blend to my um, the shoulder slope so later i'm still going to input shoulder slope of half of an inch there so this is my neckline for the back and here i will input one inch shoulder slope and link it up to that one 
to have for financial uh, sewing allowance that I've added before. Because this is a shoe that you needed a, a slope that will be visible. So here is the ammo curve. I'm just going to input the ammo curve. I raise that place by half of an inch, by one inch, then I curve it up. So here I will input the circumference measurement. Considering the back, it is the, from the center back, I will input the circumference measurement divided by four. Then on the upper chest, the circumference measurement divided by four plus half of an inch on the upper chest, I will link it together. And when I also go to the waistline, the circumference measurement divided by four also with my sewing allowance. You know, this is a free hand. I've added my sewing allowance already. So the circumference measurement divided by four on the hem line of the blouse, I will be inputting the hip circumference divided by four. My hip circumference is 10. It's 40. Divided by four will give me 10. And I added one inch sewing allowance, making 11. So that's what I put on the hip measurement. And likewise, on the waist, I put the sewing allowance of 1.5 one, 1 also. Here, yeah, I will raise it up by 2 inches. This is just like, you, you can decide to leave it like that or just, this is just like a style line on the M line of the shirt. So, I will add the sewing allowance of 1 inch all through. You know, we've added 1 inch before. So, here, because I'm raising this up by 2 inches, I will add sewing allowance to blend it up. So, I will be able to cut it right now. So after I have caught that and uh, I noticed that I don't really like the style line. So I'm making a style line that looks like a t-shirt. So I use my blue shock to retrace the style line to what I needed. So you can be creative about this one. This is not a standard. It's just what I want. What, whatever you desire is what you input, in, you draft here. So this is my button allowance. I just input my button allowance here also and notch it out so that it will blend with the upper body button allowance also then i will cut my ammo like this so this ammo when i'm sewing i'm still going to recut the ammo so let me just work with this for now so i will notch this place the center front and the center back has been notched then i will recut the front you know this is the front the two pieces for the front i will recut the neckline this is the neckline i'll be using for the front and i will leave the back like that the back will be high neck while the front will be low neck so i will notch the center front again then notch the button allowance also the button allowance i told you we are dividing that three inches by two then we have 1.5 i will notch that also so after i have notched it um this is how i'm going to sew when i want to sew it you know i'm going to fold on the first notch then the perfect everything on the next notch so i open up my shirt like this and join on the shoulder so I'll join on the shoulder. I'll first of all use my pin to hold it down so that when I get to the sewing machine, I'll just continue my joining. So I'll be joining on the shoulder by half inch. Half inch sewing allowance is what I added, so that's what I'll be using to join my shirt. So after I've done that, the this is the button allowance. I'm going to do the button, stitch the button allowance like so and fold half of an inch i'll go ahead now and stitch the button but before you stitch the button allowance make sure you put an, an interfacing you can put air stay you can put paper stay it depends on what you have available you can put gum stay so i'll be putting a gum stay here and uh, I'll, before i stitch it because if you don't put a gum stay you won't be it won't be easy for you to put your button um, button holes so here i'm trying to stitch the shoulder to shoulder the back shoulder to the front shoulder that's what i'm doing here you know i've already pinned it with my office pin so it makes it a lot more easier so i'm using half of an inch to join the shoulder to shoulder it's as simple as that making a shirt is very very easy especially using this freehand method you don't need it's it's not stressful at all just follow this um, tutorial and you are going to make a beautiful shirt out of it so after I've done that, um, I have joined the front and the back together. This is my front and these are my notches. I'm going to fold on the notch and to make my, my button allowance. So I have ironed my gum stay and the mark, the blue mark, I'll be folding on that. That's my button allowance. And this next blue mark is for the center front. So I'll be stitching on the center front right now. So I will fold on the button allowance, the blue line. The first notch, I'll first of all fold on the first notch. 
so that's that makes my button allowance and after folding on the first notch i will just put a quarter of an inch inside to stitch then it will be a straight stitch i will make sure my hand is very straight so you can do that gradually you, you know that this is a tutorial so i fast forwarded this so it may not be as fast as that when you're doing it just take your time so that you have a neat finishing so after i have done that for this i will do the same thing for the other front block so whatever i have done here i will repeat it on the front on the other front block also so after i have done that um this is what i have you can see it's coming out beautiful you can see the lines of my stitch very neat and straight so after i've done that this is what i have i have joined the front and back together so i have my neckline then i'm going to measure this neckline to be able to draft my collar so to be able to draft my shirt collar i need to take the measurement here so i'll just take the measurement like so so after i have taken the measurement i will just take the measurement like that. i'll start from the beginning like so and take my measurement including the button allowance so i have 9.5 9.5 so that 9.5 will be i will just take that 9.5 and go and use it to draft my shirt so i have folded this fabric into two here i, I folded it into two with that 9.5 unfold unfold i will input 9.5 here unfold and i'm going to chalk 9.5 out so after i have chalked 9.5 out i believe this is the circumference the next circumference this is my next circumference so i'll add half of an inch sewing allowance so 9.5 is my next circumference including the button allowance and my button allowance is almost 1.5 so if i remove 1.5 from 9.5 so here i take the shoulder the sh the color width the color width is 4.5 that's what i'm taking here on a straight line so i'm i'm talking about something about the 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 next circumference so here i will raise up the button allowance by 1.5 1.5 for the button allowance and i'm going to bring my shirt you can see the button allowance here so whatever i have here I'll use my shock to trace it out because this will stand for this allowance. Then I will link it to the former line. Just follow what I'm doing, even if you don't understand what I'm saying. So then I'll curve it up like this and um, I'm almost done. Even if you cut it like this, but for your color to sit well, you're just going to remove half of an inch from this part. So that's what I just chalk and blend it to the mid to, to the middle line. So I want to get the middle line here. Five is the middle line here. So I'll just blend it to it. So, and that's all. You can see this is very easy. This is a single piece um, shirt collar. So it, it really works for me. If you follow what I did, you are, you are going, we are going to get the same result. So I'll just cut like so. And um, after cutting this, you know, we need two pieces for this. So I'll still use this same one that I just cut. I'll use it to cut the other one I'm going to use to turn it. Turn it. So, so that means I'm going to cut two pieces of this shirt collar. So after I've gotten this, I'll go and cut another piece to use, in order to use it to turn the shirt collar. So this is the neck. This is how it is. So here, I want to draft the sleeve and there's something I need to do here. So the arm O circumference that I'm using is 18 inches. So here I need 9.5 on fold. If it's 18 inches, I need 9. And I need half inch for my sewing allowance. For my sleeve to be, for it to be convenient. People really have issues with sleeve. So if you do this, you don't have any problem. Know your sleeve circumference and input your sleeve circumference when you want to cut your arm O so sorry know your hammer circumference that's what i mean know your hammer circumference so you can measure your hammer circumference to know what your hammer circumference is just place your tape measure and measure around measure what is convenient for you so that hammer circumference for adult is starting from 18 inches upward 18 inches upward so here i have i have folded into four this is my sleeve i folded this fabric into four 
and I just measured my sleeve circumference, added two inches, and here I will, I will take two inches up upward. This is the hemline of my sleeve. This is the hemline of my sleeve, and my sleeve length is eight inches. The sleeve length I'm using here is eight. I'm, I'm using a short sleeve, eight inches. I will just mark it. Just go straight like that. And uh, I told you the width of this folding. I folded, I think it's 10 inches. So here, that's your sleeve crotch. Three inches sleeve crotch is okay for a shirt sleeve. Then I'm just going to take my ammo circumference here. The ammo circumference that I measured the other time on the shirt, making three, that is 9.5. That's what I input here. So it will correlate and when I'm fixing my sleeve, it will be accurate. So I just input 9.5. Then here, my round sleeve measurement plus one inch sewing allowance. Round sleeve measurement. My round sleeve measurement is 13, which is 6.5 on fold plus one inch is 7.5. And that's what I just input. Half of an inch will be input on the sleeve cap and you can go ahead and cut it. I think you understand this. So this is very simple. It's very simple to make a, a shirt, a shirt sleeve. So here I have my collar. I want to input my collar. You can see the way I put the shirt. The, the interfacing I use here is called um, a collar stay, a collar stay. So just input it, leave half of an inch on the M that you're going to use to the sewing allowance, the sewing allowance on your collar. So that's half of an inch that I left. You can see that I didn't allow the the stay, collar stay to, to reach the sewing allowance. So I just left the sewing allowance of half of an inch. So I will, st I will just stitch like so. Just follow the way I stitch it with half of an inch sewing allowance. Follow the way I stitch it like so. And um, after I've done that, I will trim out all the angles. Make sure you notch the angles. So that it will be easy for you to turn it out to the right side and it will lay. If you did not notch the all those angles, all those sharp edges, you won't be able to have a neat um, collar. So notch those angles, trim out all your sewing allowance must be trimmed down so that it will be able to come out. You know you use a hard stay. So after I have done that, I will turn everything out and go and give it a nice press. I'm going to iron it very well, very well. So after I have done that, this is what I have and um, I'm going to place the shirt collar on the neckline. So this is the wrong side, the wrong side of the shirt. I'm going to start from the wrong side of the shirt like so. So I'm starting on the wrong side of, of the shirt. Note, the wrong side of the shirt on the neckline, I'm starting from the wrong side because you may not see it very well. That's where I'm starting. So from the tip of the neckline I will just start gradually I will make sure I match the make sure you match the the tip of your collar to the tip of your shirt so so that there it will be neat so I'll follow sewing allowance of half of an inch here sewing allowance of half of an inch is what I'll follow and gradually I'm going to fix my collar you know there won't be it's it will be perfect by the time I fix it, finish. Because I did all my measurement. I measured the collar. I make sure the collar is is the same measurement with the with the next circumference. So make sure you get that measurement right before you start fixing your collar. So that your collar will not be your collar will not be longer than your neckline. So that's the mistake many people made. Make sure the measurement that is on your collar is the same measurement on your neck. So that it soon be one will not be longer than the other, and you now be struggling with it. So here, the sewing allowance that is remaining, I will just fold it inward, fold this inward. This is the right side. We have turned to the right side now, the right side of the shirt, and I'm going to stitch very, very close, very, very close to the tip of the of the collar. After folding it, I will stitch very close so that it will be neat. So at the tip of that sewing allowance, that's where I will be stitching. So, I'll just go ahead and fold it inward. Just take your time at this point. It is not as fast as this when I was doing it. Take note. Because this is a tutorial, I need, there's no way I won't fast forward all this part. So that we won't have a very long and um, boring video. So, after I've done that, I'm done with this teaching. This is what I have. 
and um, this is my shirt collar i'll go ahead and iron it after ironing it this is what i have fold it the way you want it to be and uh, my sleeve so my sleeve i will notch it here on the sleeve cap i will notch it here so that i'll be able to match it with the shoulder here so i i folded my sleeve into two and match it with the the shoulder line here then i'll use my pin to hold it down before i start my stitching so remember we also measure this part we make sure the armhole is the same thing the armhole on the shirt is the same thing with the armhole circumference on the sleeve so i don't have any problem my own is just to go ahead and fix and fix my shirt shirt sleeve and everything will be accurate by the time i am done because i'm following the precise measurement so this is my sleeve this is beautiful hmm. sewing a shirt is not difficult like i told you by the time you watch this video like two times you'll be able to get this accurately so i just joined my sleeve together with the sec with the measurement that i have input there and um, jo i join it all through to the hem line of the shirt so here i know i want to hem my shirt first half second half folding first half and second half making one inch that i input in the beginning of this video so i'll just fold in first half second half then i'll go gradually and be stitching it so this stitching is not as easy as this when you're folding you can pleat a little you can see the way i'm pleating because it's not a straight line so when you get to all those curvy parts sometimes you are going to pleat a little the pleat will not show on the right side it's just like a little pleat like we are making a a, a circle a circle like you are making a flare you know the way you hem a flare that's the way you hem this kind of hem line so i'll just take it gradually and put some pleats little pleats small small pleats where the, the where i have a sharp um, curve and um, it's going to come out nice so i'll go ahead first half second half small small pleats where there are sharp edges where the curve is too is too where it's too curvy you 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 don't have a choice you just put a small pleat and uh, everything will come out fine so i'll go ahead and do that till i get to the end and i'm almost done so this is what i have i have m the shirt m line so this is what i have we are almost done we are almost done and what remain is the button holes so i'm going to start from here i'll put a mark here for the first button hole the first button hole will be horizontal but the next the rest of the button hole will be vertical so the distance between one button hole and the other is three inches three inches and the button hole itself the width the width is you can make it three quarter it depends on the type of button you are you are putting and you can make it one inch one inch at most for the width of the shirt um button holes so here this is my zigzag sewing machine so i'm trying to regulate the stitch length here and it depends on the type of machine you are using so this is not a standard just make sure you make some trials on your on a piece of rag before you do it on your shirt so that you will know the kind of um, width the your stitch length and your stitch width so this is i've made one you can see the first one i made is horizontal but this one will be vertical so i'll just go ahead and input i've set my machine to the right stitch and i'll just input i'll just start putting my button holes so after i've done this finish i'll turn like so and perfect it on the other side and we are almost done with this tutorial so when i'm done with the fixing of the button holes i'm going to fix the button and i'll make sure it's correlating with the button holes that's where i'm going i'm going to mark so i'll go ahead and fix my button i think that's that's the the last thing you're going to do and give it a nice press and we are almost done with this tutorial i think this tutorial is most easiest shirt tutorial i've ever come across and this is beautiful you can see it the way it is on my neck 
very beautiful shirt and very easy to make so this is the back this comes out very nice so if you like this tutorial give this a thumbs up like share it if you have any question leave it in the comment section i'm going to reply as soon as i see it until